Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. This is the last sermon of 2023. But don't be sad. I believe that God's going to inspire you today and give you fuel for the new year 2024. And I believe that God's going to fuel your faith today. We're going to talk about the faithfulness of God. Uh, but before I do, I want to just brag on our church a little bit. I know that we've been hearing a lot of stats about what we did. But you know, it's really what God did in 2023. <laughs> what God did through us. And God chose to do it through us, which is humbling. But um, Christmas by Life Go, over 1,500 people heard the gospel. Even back at Easter, Good Friday and Easter, over 1,100 people, over three services, heard, heard the good news. You know, and the, we do what we do because we're endeavoring to follow the word of God. Right? We're endeavoring to follow the word of God. Like Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And as we're lifting up Jesus, God is drawing people to himself. And I believe that that's the reason why we had 240 new people that came through our doors last year, this year, and 170 salvations. 170 salvations and over 60 baptisms. Listen, that's awesome. That's like more than one a week. I mean, that's a lot of baptism. That's awesome. What God is doing in our church is just amazing. We believe in training up a child in the way that he or she should go, right? And so our kids' church and our kids' camp and everything that happened, over 150 kids every week are ministered to in our kids' church. Can we hear it for our kids' workers? You know, some of them, you know, you wouldn't even know that they go to church here. Because they're back there every single week and they give their heart and soul into what is happening with our kids. We hosted 67 teenagers who were touched by the power of God at our Summer Vibe Youth Camp. Come on, because we believe in training up and raising up young people in the Lord. Because Jesus commissioned us to go and make disciples of all nations, we are discipling people every week here at our Sunday morning services and throughout the week in our cruise, 500 people attended a crew this year. Come on. And 140 of those were in a Bible study crew, which I'm particularly fond of. And we, we have seen so many people growing in their faith, being transformed and the, their mind being renewed by the word of God. Just amazing what God is doing. So um, there was a, a man that came here, his name was John John Wilkins, a man that, fun he's a friend of our church, a friend of Pastor Kyle and Kenzie, came to our church and he prophesied over our church. And I just want to declare this again over our church because I believe that it's true. We have been seeing it happen and we're going to continue to see it happen. He prophetically spoke over our church that this would be a place where the presence of God is experienced and many people will come to know Jesus. I think that's worthy of an applause. Because we are living out that. And, you know, the, 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 the astounding thing about it is that it's really not about us. Because the one vital ingredient to all of this, the one most important factor is... That God is faithful. It's the faithfulness of God that brings everything together. It's God then doing his part. As we obey his word, he's doing his part in bringing people and saving people and giving heart change to people, right? Isn't it wonderful what God's doing here? So we're operating to, to function according to God's word in this church. The message today is titled, The Faithfulness of God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, over these next few moments, God, I pray, God, that you would speak to your people regarding how great is your faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies we see, Lord. So, Father, we pray, God, that at the end of this message, God, they would see you as the one whose hand is in on their life right now, 
when they look back, they could see the faithfulness of God. Lord, but your hand is on them even now that their testimony will be someday. Look what the Lord has done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm going to start off with a scripture from Luke chapter 1. My last scripture, um, uh, my, of the, my first scripture of this message uh, of the Christmas season is the story of Mary getting the word from God. How many you know Mary got a word from God? Luke chapter 1, verse 31, Behold, you will conceive in your womb, the angel spoke to her, and bring forth his son and shall call his name Jesus. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be? Since I don't know a man, and the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your re relative, has also conceived the Son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren, for with God nothing will be impossible. I want to say that again. For with God, nothing, I don't care what you got to face this year, go, going into 2024, with God, nothing will be impossible. Then, then Mary said in verse 38, behold, the maidservant of the Lord, listen to these next few words, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let it be to me according to your word. You see, Mary heard the word of God, and then she attached herself to it. She owned it for herself. She believed what the angel spoke to her. Even though it was impossible, even though the circumstances seemed like, how could this ever happen? How could a virgin become pregnant? How could it be that I would be called to, be, to, 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 to house the son of God in my womb. I mean, you think about the, the, the gravity of that, the responsibility of what she must have been. She, there's no way that she could possibly do that without believing. She believed God. She believed the word. In this last verse, in verse 45, Elizabeth, who's also pregnant, comes to visit Mary and says, blessed is she, speaking of Mary, Elizabeth says, blessed are you, Mary, who believed, because you believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. In other words, when we look at this verse, we can see that Mary is blessed because she believed God's word that was given to her, and she would see then the fulfillment of this word because of God's faithfulness. You see, God's, here's my first point. The, the faithfulness of God is tied to the promises of God. It's tied to the word of God. Too many Christians are walking around saying, yeah, God's going to do this for me and God's going to do that for me. Oh God, you will be faithful to me because you will answer my prayer and you will do what I want you to do. No, God's faithfulness is tied to his promises. God already wrote it in his book, and he will see it come to pass. He will do what he said he will do. Faithful is he who has called you, and he will also do it. Right? So we've got to attach ourselves to this word. We've got to believe the word, grasp onto the word of God, and say, yes, Lord. Regardless of my logic, regardless of, of my natural thinking, regardless of my circumstances and what seems so impossible with my situation, I'm going to believe your word. My God, that's, that, is, that is liberating. That is liber it's life changing. You don't, you don't have to struggle in yourself. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to have brain strain to fig figure out how God are you going to do this. Don't worry about how God's going to Let God be God. Let God do it his way. Let God do things the way he wants to do them. Don't take matters back into your own hands. God's about to do something wonderful. And you might not understand it, but I'm here to say you're going to look back someday and you're going to say, look what the Lord has done. It is marvelous in our eyes. The faithfulness of God is tied 
to the promises of God. We have promise after promise after promise in this word. Some say over 3,000 promises are listed in this word. Some say over 7,000 promises. I'll take the seven. I'll take number seven, 7,000 promises in this book. Hallelujah. But here's a sample of some of these promises for you and for me. These are the kinds of promises that God is all about fulfilling. He promised to forgive and cleanse us of all our sins. He promised to give us eternal life. He promised to prepare a place for us in heaven. He promised to never leave us nor forsake us. He promised to adopt us as his children. He promised to love us unconditionally. He promised to provide for our every need. He promised to heal our bodies. He promised to guide us. He promised to deliver us from Satan's power. He promised to pour his spirit out upon us. He promised to answer our prayers. And he promised to give us peace. And he promised to fill us with joy. Come on, that's a list of I don't know how many, 12 out of 7,000. You might say to me, well, I don't know what God promised me. Well, open the book. And begin to discover all the things that God has speaking. Listen, this is God's word to you. This is the word of God. That means that God is speaking it even now. And you don't know what God's saying. Don't pray and ask God for a prophetic word of some prophet to knock on your front door. Just open the book and begin to pray. And begin to see what God has already said in his word. Because this is the word that he will bring to pass in your life. My Lord. Whew. The promises of God are tied to the covenant that he has cut with us. The covenant that we have with God. We have a covenant with God. What's a covenant? It's an agreement. It's a two-part agreement. There's God's part and there's my part. But how many know we fail? We fall short? We miss the mark? We sometimes blatantly disobey but on God's part, he's faithful. He never fails. He never, he never uh, says, oh, in this circumstance, because of your, um, circum because of your situation, I'm going to like not be faithful this time. He's always faithful. He's forever faithful. Great is thy faithfulness. You see, we just need a glimpse of the goodness of God sometimes in our lives. If we would just open our eyes and see how faithful and how good God is, we would get out of our misery. Amen? What is a covenant? We are living in the new covenant because Jesus was obedient to go to the cross for us and shed his blood that was the rat that ratified this covenant. He said, this is the new covenant in my blood, like Pastor Edda read before. He redeemed us. He made us right with him. He adopted us into his family. He brought us in. He filled us with his Holy Spirit. And then he gave us his word with all the promise. Man, he set us up for, for success. With all the promises contained in the word, he gave it to us so he could have a people that showed forth the praises of him who called them out of darkness. He called us forth to show the world what it means to be in covenant with God, to have a relationship with God, to be a son or a daughter of God. It's not like about, like, oh, yeah, I believe in God. No, this he wants to show forth himself through you to this dark and dying world. That brings him glory. And I'm starting to sweat, and that's a good sign. <laughs> that's a good sign. And because God is in covenant with us, God will be faithful to fulfill his word in the same way that he fulfilled the word to Mary. 2 Corinthians 1.20. You guys ready for a Bible study? This is, this is just such a deep scripture we could probably have a five or six week study on. But I have 11 minutes. Because we're going to go back into worship in a little while. Because we're going to close the year out. Come on. We're going we're gonna to close the year out with a shout. And we're going to open the year up with worship. <laughs> Set your affections on things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. We're going to go into 2024 
in worship to him, in humble adoration to a God who's so good to us. 2 Corinthians 1.20, for as many as are the promises of God, they all find their yes or their answer in Christ. Stop right there, Lenny. What does that mean? We have 7,000 promises in the book of, in the, in the word of the Lord, right? In the Bible. Christ, on his part of the covenant, come on, old covenant, new covenant. We now are in a new and better covenant, right? Than the children of Israel were in the Old Testament. Are you with me? For all the promises of God, in, when we are in Christ, he is saying yes to them. What does it say? They all find their yes, their answer in him. Their yes. Christ, because of his faithfulness to the covenant, he says yes. Then it says, for this reason, because Jesus is saying yes, we also utter the amen or so be it to God through Christ in his person and by his agency to the glory of God. So in other words, here's the promise. Jesus, here's the covenant that the promise is based on. Jesus is saying, yes, Lenny. And then I say, amen, Jesus. He says, yes, and I say, amen. And then we see the promises come to pass in our lives. Are you getting this this morning? We see the promises of God. Listen, the Bible says that the promises of God come by faith and patience. Oh my gosh, sometimes we, we put God on a timeline and we're like, God, you know, uh, you, you, you need to do this quickly, God. You know, there's some, I could give testimony after testimony after serving God for 40 years. I could give testimony after testimony where God will take decades sometimes to answer a prayer. But what he's doing in the midst of it is more precious than anything else. The trial of our faith is more precious than gold, which perishes. What, we, what he puts us, what he allows us, I'm not going to say what he puts us through. What he allows us to go through sometimes. When we are in his kingdom, right? When we stand like Mary in the, in the face of impossible circumstances. When we stand strong. It's then that God is building something of substance within us. So it's never, it's never a waste. Oh God, this could have come 10 years ago. No, because what could God do in 10 years of time with, with, with you holding on by faith and believing God that he's going to come through for me. He hasn't come yet, but I'm about to turn a corner and something good is about to happen in my life because God will be faithful. He will be faithful. We have all these promises from God that have been given to us because of Christ's faithfulness to the covenant. He says yes. We respond by saying amen, which means we are in alignment and agreement with God's promises. Some of you need a God's promise book. You need to go, go, to, the, go to wherever. Walmart. I don't jab at Walmart. Target. No, Target probably doesn't sell them. Ooh. Uh, Walmart, anywhere. Hobby Lobby, don't go on Sundays. Chick-fil-A, uh, no. And get yourself a God's promise book. Lord, I'm going through this. Okay, let's look up the subject. God, what does your word say? What does your word say about it? What are you saying, God? What are you saying about this? And it says, this brings glory to God. He's like, oh, good, good, good. You know what? God gave me this for you. Your disappointment is actually God's appointment with you. Your disappointment, when, whenever you're disappointed, whenever you're discouraged, that disappointment is God's appointment with you. You have an appointment, come visit the doctor. Come to the doctor. We have an appointment. So let me sit you down. Let me show you. First, let me, let, let's, let's go over the promise. This is what I promised you. It will come to pass, Lenny. Faith and patience, Lenny. Just believe. Hold on a little longer. Don't you dare throw in the towel, Lenny. 
Because what I'm doing in you is so much greater than what you, what you think is an answer to prayer will do for you. Listen, Jerry and I have been through so much, not in our marriage, but we have been through so much together. Walk in this life with Jesus over the last 40 years. 40 years. You think it hasn't been, been without trial? I mean, I mean, my weight, my, you know, I'm just joking. <laughs> but has it been without trial? I feel like sometimes this is like the hour of darkness and the hour of darkness never ends. I've been there. I know what you're walking through, some of you. I know what it feels like. It feels like there's no end in sight. I just need a little light at the end of the tunnel. How long is this going to take, oh God? But listen, God is not going to test you beyond what you're able to bear. But with the temptation, he'll provide a way of escape. Listen, God's not going to push, push you through something that you can't handle. But he knows where you are and what you can handle. And he, sometimes it feels like he's pushing you just a little bit too hard. I, I don't know if I could take the training wheels off the bike, God. I don't know if I could trust you for this thing, God. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm so used to doing things the way that I've always done them. And the, this has always worked for me. And God's saying, Lenny, it's time to take off the training wheels. It's time to grow up. God has been speaking to me, guys. I've been saved for 40 years. God has been speaking to me about sin in my life. Pastor Lenny, you have sin in your life? We should bring in the officials. No, listen, like what I came out of, alcoholism and all that stuff that I came out of, a broken past, addictions and everything, what I came out of, yeah, all of that is in my past. It's under the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But we get lackadaisical in our walk with God, and then there's other things that he has his finger on, and we're like, oh, God, but I don't do that anymore. God, I'm, I'm pretty good now. And God put his finger on gluttony in my life. Somebody's clapping. God put his finger on gluttony in my life. You might not be a drunk, Lenny, but you're drunk with food. You're using food as an escape, just a little comfort at night to make you feel less nervous about things. Oh, oh, it's a reward that you need to give yourself because, after all, you've had such a hard day and all the opposition and all the things that are going on in your heart and in your mind, Lenny. Uh, and Lenny says to Lenny, Lenny, I need a little bit of ice cream. <laughs> Come on, church. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you. I don't know what your ice cream is. I don't know what it is for you, but it was for me. And God put his finger on something that I, and now I feel like this is the greatest challenge for the last, since November 25th, I've been doing intermittent fasting of a minimum of 14 hours a day. I cut out 90% of my sugar. I have, I have, I'm not eating at night, or at least I have an incentive not to eat at night because I have to have a minimum of 14 hour intermittent fasting. And so God is just like, and I feel like this is fun, Jesus. This is like when I gave up alcohol, when, when, he, when he brought me out of alcoholism. And I, and I turned my back on the thing that was destroying me. Amen. I'm 62 years old. I have a lot of life left in me. Come on. I want to live till I'm 99, 103. I don't care. But I believe that God's restoring my youth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Who satisfies your life with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I believe God is able to renew my youth. You believe that? And my son John's making me cool with these shoes he got me for Christmas. I'm feeling good. My pants are two inches shorter than they used to be because, you know, I can't wear those long pants to try to extenuate my, my leg length so I look skinnier. I'm not wearing as short pants as Pastor Kyle yet, but at least I got up to the top of my shoe. I got 56 seconds to finish this message. <laughs> I am in trouble. They said, Pastor Lenny, you got to make this message short. I said, I can't. You got the wrong guy. <laughs> 
2 Timothy 2.13 says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny his, himself. He cannot deny his own character. God will be faithful no matter what. But even when we're faithless, you know, that makes me want to be faithful. He abides faithful. Lord, that, I, I want to listen to you, Lord. I want to obey your voice. I want to obey what you're saying to me. And ever since I talked to you about food, I'm starving. <laughs> Listen, what he says he will do, his word is true. It might not come about in the way we want it to or in the timing that we believe that it should, but he will remain faithful at the end of your life. Listen, on my gravestone, I want to see this. Leonard Michael Ports loved his wife and loved his family, and God was faithful to him. That's what I want on my tombstone. That no matter what I've got, no matter what valley I've got to walk through, no matter what trial I've got to endure, no matter what storm comes my way. Come on, Jesus said, you're blessed. Jesus said, he, he, a, a man, a wise man is like a man who, 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 who built his house upon the rock. We're going to sing about it in a minute. He built his house upon the rock. And though the winds blew and the storms came and the floods rose, he was not moved. He was not moved. He was not moved by the circumstances of his life because his life was built upon a rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. And the rock is his word. The rock of ages and the rock of truth is his word. We stand upon his word. We believe his sayings. We believe his word. And we are blessed because of it. The faithfulness of God, is my next point, fuels our faith. If you read Hebrews chapter 11 and many of the other verses about these patriarchs and matriarchs of faith in the Bible, their faith was not in themselves. You know, by faith, this one, by faith, that one, by faith, Moses, by faith, Abraham, by faith, Sarah, by faith, this one and that one, by faith. But their faith was in the faithfulness of God. They knew that there was a God factor involved in what they were doing. They knew that they knew that if they that that when they were stepping forth by faith and doing endeavoring to do what God had called them to do, that God would meet them there. God would meet them there. But you might be saying to me, Pastor, I don't know if God will be faithful to me. Yeah, he was faithful to you. Well, I don't know if he'd be faithful to me. You might be faced with all kinds of opposition and insurmountable problems. But listen, you're exactly in the right place. Can I just, can I just tell you, not only do, am I saying that God is faithful and testifying that God is faithful, God has a resume. God has a resume. He has a track record. He has a history. Come on, let's take a look at God's resume. Not only was he faithful to Mary to see the fulfillment of his word to her, there are so many others. What about Abraham? God promised him that he would be the father of many nations. But he was tested in his faith when God asked him to sacrifice his son Isaac. But God provided a substitute, the ram caught in the thicket, to be sacrificed instead of Isaac. God was faithful to David as he faced Goliath. David said, this day the Lord will deliver you, Goliath, into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. God was with David when he fought against Goliath. He was faithful to take the giant down. What giant are you facing? God will be faithful to take that giant down when you face it in the name of the Lord. David said, I come to you in the name of the God of Israel. Amen. God was faithful to Joseph, although he sent away as a slave because of his brother's jealousy over the coat with many colors. God was faithful to preserve his life and make him to prosper everywhere he was, even in prison, and then raise them up to be second in command in Egypt. 
God was faithful to Daniel to preserve his life in the lion's den. God was faithful to Daniel's three Hebrew friends who were brought before King Nebuchadnezzar because they wouldn't bow to the idol and they were thrown into the fiery furnace. But he said, I see not three men, but there's a fourth one and he's like the son of God in the fire with them. Come on, God preserved the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. God was faithful to Esther in the midst of uncertainty and the risk of death. God gave Esther favor with the king and God's people were saved. God was faithful to Sarah to give her a child even when she was barren and unable to have a child. Hebrews 11, 11 says this, and by faith even Sarah who was past childbearing age was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. Woo. Woo. That was a sprint. As a matter of fact, the whole book of chapter 11 in the book of Hebrews is really about them attaching their faith to the faithfulness of God. Here's my last point. The faithfulness of God will stand regardless of your circumstances. <laughs> Pastor Edder preached my message before. The faithfulness of God will stand regardless of our circumstances. Can I testify to you for a moment in the next 30, 30 seconds? I was going to say 30 minutes, 30 seconds. If I, if, I could, if I could accelerate this, I, I want to just tell you real quick. Jerry and I have been testimony after testimony after testimony of God's faithfulness. But in 1991, we had been married for six years. Um, we had two boys, Tim and John. My boy up here playing, now 30. How old are you, John? 35? 34, there he is. Um, we were renting houses because we couldn't fit in apartments anymore. And um, somebody told us about a, a housing lottery in Riverhead, New York, out in the east end of Long Island. I was commuting 20 minutes to work. It was fun. So um, a house in Riverhead, but these houses were like $88,000 in New York. $88,000. So we put our name in the lottery. It was 120 houses being built for first-time home buyers. And um, we got picked number 152 out of 120. We were the 32nd alternate, and so we didn't get picked. But you're still, you're still an alternate. Your, your name's on a waiting list just in case people drop out. We were like, oh, God, is this possible? And there we were. A month later, we got a phone call. 32 people dropped out. You're eligible to get a house. 1,500 square feet, which was a mansion for us. 1,500 square foot. It took us 18 months to get the mortgage. We would drive out to Riverhead from where we lived 30 minutes away, and we would stand on the property while the house was being built. Oh, God, if this is our house, God, we claim it in the name of Jesus. We decree it in the name of Jesus. This is our house. By your providence, by your provision. Because God, you promised in your word that you would provide for all of our needs. And so finally, Jerry was pregnant. When we moved in, Jerry was nine months pregnant with Amy. So we moved in and we grew and the family grew by up to five children. Notice up to, we terminated. No, we didn't terminate. We stopped childbearing after five children. That's the nicest way to put it. We stopped childbearing. She stopped childbearing, not me. I can't get we, I can't say we, she. So, so we, we um, then we were um, three bedrooms. So we had three boys in one room. We had two girls in the other room. And thankfully, Jerry still wanted to share the third bedroom with me. <laughs> and there we were. And then we got to say, you know, you, then you face the next one. Oh, God, this house is so small. We had dressers in the hallway. When you walk and you open the door, practically hit the banister going up the steps. We had a sectional in the, in, the, in the family room so we could watch TV together. And the door to the half bath hit the side of the sectional. And like, it was just too small. We're like, oh, God, you're a provider. But you had to be in the house for 10 years. Otherwise, you had to pay back this $25,000 grant that they give you. So... Um, at this point, I was living in Riverhead, the east end of Long Island. Then I got a job somewhere in the midst of that in Manhattan. 
So not only was I commuting, I was commuting from East End of Long Island all the way to Manhattan. Jerry likes to say three hours one way. On a good day, it was two and a half hours one way. I was spending five hours a day, five to six hours a day commuting. God, I don't see my children. You said to train up a child when he should be, when he's old enough. If I'm never there, how can I train them up? This is not Jerry's only responsibility to raise up these children. And there we were. At one point, we only had one car. And I was trying to give her the car as much as I could and getting rides from people to the train station and, and, and so on. And then 9-11 hit. And I was in Manhattan on the day because I worked in Manhattan. And I said, God, if there's any way. At that time, a month before that, the guy that I reported to, not only did, was he over northeast, he took over mid-Atlantic. So now the, he had the office in Richmond. I said, hey, if anything ever opens up in Richmond, let me know. Two months after 9-11, he said, there's an opening for a director position in Richmond. I want you to apply for it. I applied along with other candidates, and I was picked. <laughs> this was 10 years and one week after we moved into the house in Riverhead. We didn't have to pay anything back, and we profited $150,000 in the sale of our house. Don't tell me God is not faithful. We moved from a 1,500 square feet to a 5,500 square foot house here in Chesterfield. What an amazing story. And I could tell you story after story. And listen, we're still in the midst of some valleys in our life. We're still believing God for some things to come to pass. Listen, my commute went to 20 minutes. We were now in this big house. God was blessing. And then there were giants in the promised land. <laughs> oh, this comes the Yankee, Lenny from New York. Oh, who does he think he is? Take it over over here. And I was like, I tried to hide my accent and everything and didn't work too well. And like we faced all this kinds of uh, opposition and people making stories up about me and, and all this stuff. It was crazy. And I'm like, God, you're a vindicator. Your word says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. We kept going back to the promises of God. We're believing God. Now we're believing God for other things in our lives. We're believing that God will be faithful. Listen. I can tell you story after story after story about God's faithfulness in our lives. But I'm here to inspire you today to never give up. Don't you ever let go of the hem of his garment. Don't you ever let go of Jesus. Don't you ever stop embracing the cross. Don't you ever stop. Because listen, sometimes the pain is all worth it when you go through it and you come to the resurrection. And you can look back and you say, I'm so glad that I held on to Jesus through what I went through. Because if I didn't, who knows where I would be. I'd be in no man's land somewhere. But I'm looking back and I see how God was with me all all the time and he brought me through and he will be faithful come on give God praise the faithfulness of God I can tell you story after story about God's faithfulness in our finances unbelievable what God has done and still is doing but let me leave you with this we're gonna we're, we're gonna go back into worship but before we do, I want to make it available that if you need prayer for anything, our prayer team is going to be up here. You come on up. We're going to pray for you. We're going to believe God, stand with you by faith in the standing on the faithfulness of God and the promises of God with you going into 2024. But you might be here today. You might say, Pastor Lenny, I have never made the covenant. I've never said yes to the covenant. I've never said amen to the promises of God in Christ. I've never, I don't know what it's like to have a personal relationship with Jesus, and today I want it. I hear your story, you're living proof, and millions and millions of others are living proof that Jesus will be faithful. If that's you, with every head bowed and every eye closed, you wanna give your life, that's all the covenant is, is he standing there saying, I'm with you, I'm ready, to begin to bless you, all you need to do is say yes and amen. If that's you, 
Can you just lift up your hand real quick and say, I want to say yes to Jesus today. God sees those hands. God sees those hands. Can we all pray together as a church? Say, Lord Jesus, I'm coming into covenant with you. I believe that you did all that you did for me and your word and your promises are for me. You died on the cross to forgive me of my sins. You rose from the dead to give me new life. Come into my heart and live your life through me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, let's give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. I wish I had more time. But we're going to do one more thing before we worship. And listen, we're going to go out with a shout. and We're going to praise God. We're going to worship Jesus, right? But I have a declaration that I feel like I want us to all share together. Would you stand to your feet? We're going to make a declaration over this coming year. I'm going to give you a minute to look it over. Make sure that you're ready to declare it. How's everybody? Blessed. Okay, you ready? Let's declare this together as a church. Here we go. We believe that God is faithful. We believe that God has done great things in our lives, and he is still doing great things. Our trust is in Jesus, and our faith is in his word. He will be faithful to all his promises. 2024 will be a year of the Lord's favor. We will see the goodness of God. Though trials may come, though storms may rage, we will not be moved. His faithfulness will bring us through. We will experience the faithfulness of God in all areas of our lives individually and in our church. Amen. Come on, let's give God the praise that he deserves.